everybody, Vivian here with a video tutorial today for you. I have a layout and I'm focusing on beautiful papers from Donna Salazar Designs collections that she's got with GCD Studios. Um, today's uh, tutorial is focusing mostly on media. Um, I really love the line of um, mixed media inks that Donna Salazar Designs has with ClearSnap. She's got a, a new collection of inks as well that are uh, mixed media inks, chalks, C-H-O-X, which are fast drying. I love them all. So I'm going to be using um, some of those products in today's video tutorial as well. I'm using a sheet, a beautiful light blue from um, her Fun and Funky collection. What I've done here is just randomly gessoed over the surface and I'm just taking one of my personal stamps and um, stamping into the areas where the gesso is thicker. So the gesso was applied using the edge of a credit card. Um, any hard surface will do and um, I really like the uh, varied effect applying gesso that way. I'm going to be using a Donna Salazar Designs stencil that she's produced with Want to Scrap, but I just wanted to share with you quickly what this looks like so far. So um, it's very subtle. Once you add media, colored media, um, you, you can see the uh, stamped patterns a little bit better. But isn't that a beautiful stencil? I love those curvy shapes. Uh, and we're going to be using this. I'm just deciding on the placement. We're going to be using this with some texture paste that you can get in any craft store to create some really fun, cool textures in our project. I'm all about creating hills and valleys in my projects in numerous ways. Uh, this is one way you can do it with some really fantastic results if you're into the grungy, um, heavily textured dimensional layouts like I am. I'm trying to get nice, even coverage in the areas of the stencil where I want the pattern to show. Um, but I am going for a really natural look. So I'm sort of letting that top left hand corner go and I'm not going to put texture paste all over it. Um, and I'm going to add this texture paste uh, using the stencil in two places on my layout. So here you can see as I lift that stencil off, the beautiful patterns that you can achieve using this stencil from Donna Salazar. It's a great size and scale for layouts and for cards, I think. Um, it's very easy to handle. And here you can see what it looks like. So you might say, oh, this is so bland. Where are all the colors? This is all preparatory. I chose a way of working today um, in which we create all of our hills and valleys first before applying the lovely color. And there will be lots and lots of color. Um, I've gotten some recognition in the last several months for my work with hot glue. And I just wanted to share with you um, what I do. I'm very interested in nature and the human body and the garden and these wonderful vascular effects that you see in the human body and in you know the petals of flowers and leaves. Um, I call it a vascular hot glue effects. And um, so I just take my hot glue gun and I draw it across my paper surface um, in these patterns. And um, it takes just a little while to uh, develop your own style with it. Um, this is what I do and I, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. I really like it. It's, it's definitely me. As a starting point, what I'll sometimes do, and I'm doing that here, is using some of the designs that are already present in my project and using them as a starting point, a, a taking off point, and sort of echoing some of the shapes that I see in the stencil. And then just doing my best to take my head out of the whole process and let my hand take over. At this point, because I've got a huge section of white um, that I've gessoed, uh, I'm doing this intermediary step, which I sometimes don't do, of um, gessoing my hot glue trails. Uh, a lot of uh, followers 
have mentioned that it takes a really long time for these hot glue patterns to dry when you use it with the mixed media inks. And that is true. Um, I'm not in any rush for it to dry. And sometimes I'll just go in without this step and um, apply my inks. Uh, the great thing about these the mixed media inks is that they're so juicy and vibrant and it's really luxurious. You'll see, um, if you're not familiar with my work, um, how I apply it in just a second. Um, so, but if you are concerned about that, um, you can gesso first and it, it creates sort of a dry surface where the mixed media inks can um, dry more quickly. So here you can see a close up of what it looks like so far. It's all really just texture, hills and valleys. And um, some of the hills and valleys created with the stencil and texture paste, and more created with my hot glue trails. So here's where just some fantastic fun begins. We start applying color. Um, I am crazy about mists, and I have a huge collection of smooch spritzes from Clear Snap. Um, these are in a range of blues. There are several blues that are available. Um, the blues I'm using today are Splash, Navy Twinkle, and Sea Breeze. Um, and I'm just allowing it all to mix. I'm alternating with mist and water um, and letting it roll into all those valleys that we've created with our stencils and texture paste and hot glue and it really um, gathers in all the little nooks and brings out those patterns in a way that just really floats my boat. Um, if the uh, media goes down too intense, at this point while it's still wet, you can really very easily dilute it with, um, by misting with water. And I will tilt my paper this way and that to get all my inks to go where I want them to. Um, I don't want to leave out any of my uh, valleys that I've created. And you can um, tap off any excess with a paper towel. And I'm rubbing some of that media into the areas that I stamped to bring out those patterns that I um, stamped into my gesso at the beginning of the video. So now that we've had a good opportunity to get intensely colored media into all the valleys that we've created. Um, now, once everything is dry, um, I'm going to go over the hills with more media. Um, I'm using primarily uh, mixed media inks, and this I was trying. I was going for colors that sort of echo the colors in my focal image. It's a picture of um, brown-eyed Susan. The variety is um, which variety is it? Cappuccino. So there are some warm browns and oranges and even a little bit of red, uh, red in there. So here I'm using the vintage retro mixed media ink to go over the uh, raised hot glue areas as well as the raised texture pasted areas. And as you can see, it's really bringing out those shapes. So right now I'm using the mixed media inks in vintage retro. I also used some um, craft ink, I believe it's called Fire, um, and that's also from Clear Snap, and a brown pigment ink from Clear Snap, and um, uh, copper, which was a very fun pigment ink to use on this project. So let me show you close up what everything looks like so far. I'm really happy with it, and um, colors sort of transition very naturally from one to another. I like the way pigment, pigment sinks into the texture paste.
And if you're concerned about paper warping, um, what I do often is uh, put weights down when I'm working and um, weights down on the corners of my paper. And that seems to help quite a bit. So I just wanted to share with you some um, progress shots. This is what these patterns looked like prior to adding my focal image and um, embellishments. So I cut out this tag shape from the same color paper from Donna Salazar um, from her Fun and Funky collection. And I stamped it using the juicy mixed media inks that she also produces. That's in a color here called Indigo. I let that dry and I'm going to do some heat embossing on top of this tag. I was, as you can see, I was very imprecise about my stamping, repeat stamping in some places and just um, enjoying that uh, imperfect look. I'm going to, I, I ran a anti-static device on top. You can get that at any craft store. Uh, you can also just use a dryer sheet. Um, and I'm laying the stencil on top and I'm going to go over it uh, also imperfectly with this copper um, pigment ink from Clear Snap. So I'm going to tap that in using a cosmetic sponge and get a very soft impression of those beautiful patterns from the stencil. Once I've gotten it in all the areas where I want the inked pattern to go, I'm going to sprinkle some uh, clear, it's, it's very wet and juicy, the pigment inks and Donna Salazar designs uh, mixed media inks are very wet so they're really great for uh, applications with heat embossing. So I'm sure many of you have heat embossed before but for those of you who haven't, it's very easy. Um, I'm tapping some clear embossing powder on top of my wet inked areas and tapping off the excess. And then I'm going to set my heat tool on top. It's not a blow dryer, it's a heat tool specifically for crafters. And um, it's going to melt that powder. Let's see if you can see that. And it's going to give you a glossy finish over the ink color that you chose. I added some journaling on the back of this tag, so I have some hidden journaling. And you can't really see it too well here, but what I wrote was, I recently realized what it is that draws me to the garden. This is where I feel closest to God. Um, and I just uh, stapled my photo to a piece of corrugate that's from Want to Scrap. I distressed that corrugate um, to bring out those hills a little bit by uh, rubbing some truffle mixed media inks on top. Um, and after I stapled my photo to that piece, I just inserted the tag behind the photo so you can just easily pull that out. And then I hot glued the whole piece down. I added um, some of these chipboard alphas from Donna Salazar and GCD Studios. Um, and it says closer. Um, and that title just represents what I said in my journaling. And to, uh, I, I like that they're white because you can easily color them to suit your taste. And I added some of the uh, copper pigment ink to help it coordinate with my layout. And here I'm just showing you all the little pieces. I added some uh, yellow organza to uh, add some real lightness and softness to an otherwise um, somewhat dark and grungy layout. Here are some final shots of my project. This is the full layout. And here's that lovely light yellow organza to lighten things up just a little bit. Here's a shot of my vascular effects and some of the heat embossing we did with Donna's um, stencil. 
in some of her alphas, her chipboard alphas, that I distressed up a little bit. Before I sign off, I just want to shout out a big thank you to Donna Salazar and her amazingly talented team um, for the opportunity to work with her product and to visit with her audience. I hope I was able to inspire you and um, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to share some of what I do and my process with you. Thanks again for watching and um, if you'd like you can visit me at my blog it's contadinak.com and my channel on YouTube is contadinak. Thank you. Bye.